Hello everyone, uh, this is my first lecture so far I've made. Today's lecture is on the Chinese Fuseki, which is, I see it pretty often in mid queue players and such, but a lot of people don't actually know how to respond to this. Like they may, might see responses to it or they might not know why. So first you have to know what the purpose of the Chinese Fuseki is. The purpose of this move is basically to get territory on the right side. It's all working together on the right side to make a big amount of territory there. So, a lot of mistake a lot of people make right away is they see, okay, black's making a ton of territory here, here, I have to invade it. So they'll either play this cockery or this one. So, you don't want to do this as white because what you end up doing is pincering yourself with a stone at R9. So, let's say it goes like this, which is worse than the high uh, Kakari. So, uh, black would just do this to take away the base. Black jumps. Black. Or black could do this, I guess. But, this is more commonly played. Then, white here, as you can see, the farthest you can extend is right here. And this is definitely is not far enough to make a sufficient base for two eyes. So, I saw this in a game once, which is totally wrong because you're not getting a base at all. Well, I can just do this, and if he wants to take your base away later, he can do this. And then you have no eyes at all. So, let's say you did do this. Well, I could just jump out like this, and as you can see, you're really getting surrounded. And it's going to be really hard to even escape at this point. So, uh, yeah, you're just helping black in this case. Black's getting territory on the bottom side, and he's going to get a framework up top uh, with the moves he's going to get while you're trying to run away. And so, even though you got into this little section of territory, he's going to make up for it and a lot more from you running away. So, always think, if you're going to invade somewhere, can I live easily? Will I have to run? If I do run, what will that do? And in this case, you do not want to invade. Invading too early in the game and making yourself weak is like never a good idea. If you see that you're doing that in your games, then try to play a little bit safer. Uh, if, you're, if, you, if you're wondering whether or not you invade or not, it might just be better to play another big part on the board. So, what are the correct responses then? Uh, in this case, there's quite a few responses. There's this one, 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 and there's this one. These are all the most common. I'm sure there is, uh, I think this is also one. I'm sure there is uh, more than this, but this is uh, most common. Uh, it's considered the best to approach on the right side. Because, so, white plays here, for instance. And this seems kind of strange. Because if white plays here, which is like one of the most common, black encloses, and by doing this you just gave black territory, you just gave him this huge corner, and he gets a nice extension at R9, and he has his stone at Q16. So, it doesn't really make sense to give black exactly what he wants. White jumps out, uh, and the reason why this is not uh, the reason why this is better for white than playing something like this is because when you play one of these over here somewhere around here doesn't really matter kind of matters on your preference then when black encloses this corner there's a lot of different uh, invasions you can do later on say if you just jump out for one thing you can now expand, let's say just black plays up here or something, you can now expand off this uh, d4 stone and off this uh, and now everything's working together quite nicely. So you destroy black's uh, framework, it's all flat now, it's all third and fourth line. There's no way for uh, black in or how he's set up right now to create a moyo. He would have to make a few moves to do that. And um, you do give your opponent territory, which is the reason why 
the Chinese Fuseki is so popular is because um, it's so hard to combat. Yeah, you really, uh, well actually, White uh, has invasions here, he has invasions here, he has invasions here later. These are all invasions to try to reduce later. Um, but uh, an important thing to note is you don't want to make these invasions too early. Just like uh, you don't want to make this too early because then you're running, the same is true with these. Because if you make these right away and black encloses, then you're going to have to give black this big wall so you can live. And uh, this isn't working good for you. You're getting a few points down here, and Black's getting a big old wall that he can use to attack, that he can use to invade. It's much too early to invade at this point. But the reason why this is okay is because you can handle it later. It's possible for White to still reduce his position even though Black got territory. And um, now you're not putting yourself in a position where you're weak, and you can now start building a framework. So this is much easier to handle as white. It's uh, considered an equal result for both sides. Um, let's go over this variation also, because I didn't do this. If you do this as black, um, it's important to note when you, when you do something like this, uh, it's not usually good to do something like this, because uh, black has just keys like this, uh, or maybe just simpler, just like this or something. And then white can get out, and this is this is better for white than if he's surrounded like this. If you see this, you can see this is a pretty normal Josuke that almost all of us know. Now, uh, this is normal. Uh, white can just jump out or something. Anyways, as you can see, white's really getting surrounded in here, and he still doesn't have two eyes in here. With black at that stone at S2, he can still uh, reduce uh, white's eye shape and his territory later on. And as you can see, uh, black's getting a framework uh, on this side where he can, if black does push out or something, then black can expand out. Or maybe this is over expansion, but anyways. So black got this nice wall over here, and he got these two stones on the right side. And black got these stones that like reduced uh, black, but they're still not completely alive, and they're not serving too much of a purpose, besides just reducing a little bit of black's territory. So don't no, don't ever invade too early, and don't try to invade the Chinese fuseki in this way. Uh, this is also another variation of the Chinese fuseki. Uh, I'm not going to go into it too much, just because uh, it's not played as commonly. It's not seat as much. This is this is just a higher position, and higher positions you're trying to go for more of a moyo based game than a um, a territorial standpoint. So white would just do something like this, anyways. Although there are, there are different variations. So um, um, I should also note this: uh, if white does do this, and it goes like this. Um, Black can also push here. This is something I like better. Uh, and then white, I mean black can peep. And white shouldn't directly play here. He should play here first because this is sente for uh, white because if black cuts, then he gets out. And that stone at P7 uh, doesn't really matter that much because now he gets out into black side. And uh, black's going to need to make uh, another move just to capture it. So, as black first, you want to play here. And then it's important to block this cut. And then white will block. And then, as you can see here, uh, white's really surrounded now. Although he got a little more eye space uh, on the bottom, uh, it doesn't really matter that much. Like, if white made some type of move in here to make himself survive, he could do it easier than he did in the other variation. But he's a lot more surrounded this way, and black stronger on the uh, top side, so I like that better as uh, black. And uh, also, if uh, it did go like this, black in this case has this big wall. And um, it's a common uh, saying that most of us know that you're supposed to use your thickness to attack. 
but in reality this is sick but it's not completely safe yet because there's this still this weak li whenever uh let me go back to the dress key first whenever you play this s2 instead of this p2 with p2 it's a little bit safer because there's no weaknesses really at all with this move you get the big end game move that you can make it like uh, T5 or whatever, but then white has this move later. Uh, black can try this, or this is also fine. This is most common. Something like this. Anyways, uh, uh, I actually think this is more common. But, uh, so as black, when you make this Joski, you always have to be uh, mindful that there's that weakness at P3. So in this case, uh, likewise, there's still that weakness there. So let's say black plays elsewhere. He plays right here. Then white can take Sente, and he can play right here. Because uh, if black doesn't block that weakness, Let's say black plays here. Or even if black tries something like running away like this, white can play right here, and no matter what he does, white's going to connect. And now, these two groups are cut off from each other. And this is really bad, because these white stones are not going to die. They can just extend outwards to like K3, Extend outwards to J3, they can ascend outward to K4. There's nobody to kill these white stones. And now your black stones are very weak, and this is really, really bad for black. So, as black, even if you, uh, even if you did defend with a move like this, then uh, white could just play back, and you use this big wall just to gain like a few points in here and uh, white got a nice extension out here and this is really not good for black because um, what he originally wanted with this wall uh, was to either attack or uh, create points somehow but uh, when the variation went like this uh, black now it's very hard to attack because of those stones at M3 and J3 are pretty strong and they're forcing black against uh, against uh, this just section over here. And so this is really bad for black. So um, black should expand somewhere like this. Um, although there's still this weakness that black needs to be mindful of. Uh, so this would be safer like this because then it would be harder for black to do anything because then if it went like this, now black can't escape, it, escape as easy. We go like this, as you can see. So, um, if you want to be safe like this, I kind of like this better because I'm greedy. Uh, and yeah, so playing anywhere else, playing up here, uh, and even playing over here is a little bit questionable because black could, white could try something like this. Of course, black could play this, cause, but um, in this case, the Josuke that goes like this, uh, I don't really like it in this case because these stones at G3 and 4 um, aren't going to be very strong and there's really no reason to do this in the first place because this J4 stone isn't going to die. So, um, so the differences in these moves uh, is really a matter of, in a way, preference. Like, let's say white does this. Then if black does this, white does this, black has this undercut later. So he can get rid of that territory. But also, if white does something like this, then um, for one thing, it's easier for black to make some type of framework on the top because these stones are on the third line instead of the fourth line, so they're not affecting the center as much. And um, they're also not working as well together if white wants to make a framework like this. So I personally like this move better. And the difference between 
these two moves and that there's a little bit more Aji for uh, Black to invade somewhere around here later to try to pincer. Um, the same with this one. There's this Aji right here later. Um, so it's really a matter of preference. Like uh, this, you're forcing this uh, black zone a little bit more. And also something that's uh, a little bit common in, um, in uh, amateur games is this move. And um, in this context, it's better for black just to enclose like this because in reality, white's just giving him territory. So even though white is um, uh, flattening black's moyo and gaining an extension himself, uh, white and black's also getting territory this way. And he has a nice extension at R9. So if black pincers here, uh, it's better if white doesn't do this. Because then black will just do this, white does this, black does this, and then white would have to jump out. Um, in this way, blacks, black could do this again and keep on pressuring your group. And now black, uh, all these weaknesses that were back here are kind of going away back here. It's a lot harder, it'll be a lot harder for white to invade later. Also, these stones at K, um, K4 and M3 are making territory also. And white's not really making any territory at all. He just... Uh, jumping into the middle and trying to make eyes basically. So in this case, white shouldn't jump out like this, or I don't think white should jump out anyways. Uh, the move is actually this one, which is uh, the common invasion that you see a lot. And then uh, a normal move for black would be uh, um, is um, this move. But as you can see in this case, Black then gets laddered, and this is way too good for white. Then this stone at M3 is looking really lonely, and white destroyed a lot of black's territory. So, in this case, black has to do this. And then he connects, and then white uh, encloses the corner. And white jumps out, because then he starts to enclose white more. And, uh, See, it's about to be a ladder, so white has to pull back. Black defends the cut. And you can see from this, uh, in this case, black has a little bit of territory on the bottom, but white is really strong and um, is, inside the ter is inside black's territory. And he still has uh, Aji with the cut at 06, and he can still expand a little bit to R7. And um, it's a lot different from, uh, let's see if I can find it, uh, this variation, because for one thing, this group doesn't have uh, all of its eyes yet, and he was uh, and Black got Sente in the end, so he could expand off over here or something. So uh, the difference between these two variations is now White's really strong, and he got a lot more points in doing so, and White has Sente, and Black didn't gain very much points over here. So um, this is really counterproductive to what Black wanted in the first place with this Chinese Fuseki. Um, so uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please subscribe if you liked it. Uh, I'll be probably doing a lecture on the mini Chinese Fuseki in the micro next time. So um, please stay tuned, and I'll see you guys later.